Have you seen these enamel powders and wondered what they were and if you should try them? Or maybe, like me, you bought some and let them sit unopened on a shelf for a year or more. Well, I've finally opened them. Join me as we explore their creative possibilities. Hey there, Sandy here. Welcome to another mixed media video at KeepsakeCrafts.net. First off, let me explain to you a few things about what these are. There is some confusion because they are called enamels, and when we think of enamels, we usually think of glass. However, glass melts at about 1500 degrees, and these are not glass, they are epoxy resin, which is why you can use them in your home oven. I made a few test samples showing all the colors. These are all on polymer clay tiles, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use them on polymer clay. But they can be used on anything that can go in a 300 degree oven. Metal, glass, wood, stone, porcelain, ceramic, and they are very durable, and they don't chip or flake off the surface. So these little samples are just to show what the colors look like. Of course, after looking at them, I was bored, so I sprinkled some other colors on top, which I think is one of the coolest effects you can get with these. And these colors are very true to what you see in the bottles. I didn't notice any color shifting whatsoever. As I mentioned, these powders are opaque. They don't let the color of the base show through unless you put them on very thinly. You can see here I have the black powder that was melted onto a white polymer clay tile very thickly, and you don't see the white clay through it. Here is a thick application of white powder on a black tile, and again, you don't see the color through it. But if you apply the powder very thinly, such as in this black tile that has just a light dusting of white on it, I just put the white on it and then flicked off all the excess, you can see the black base shows through. It's not really translucent, but it's a different effect you can achieve. And this one has a thin coating of white powder on black. It gives a nice texture, so it's something to play with. Hey there, Sandy here with a couple quick questions for you. Are you finding value in this video? If so, you should thank my patrons because they voted for the topic. Do you want to say in what I create next? Or how about a bonus video every month? Join us! Patreon.com slash Sandy Sewin for all the details. And back to your video. I did want to talk for a minute about these sieve tops. This set of 10 powders came with two of these tops, and they're fantastic. I ordered more, so I'll have sieve tops for all of my bottles, and I will link to where you, you can get those. It's a place in the UK, so shipping's a little expensive, but I'll talk more about the other powders I buy, including the extra sieve tops, in the next video. A cool thing about using these powders on polymer clay is that raw polymer clay is sticky, so they stick beautifully. Although they don't have to stick to something if it's a flat piece that's going to remain level while you apply it and then cure it. You can use a stencil to get lo a lovely stencil design, and you can also use a silk screen. The powders are that fine. As far as the polymer clay temperatures, most of the time I bake Primo Sculpey at 275 Fahrenheit, but these say they need to be at 300. So I use Kato, which bakes at 300 for my light color, the white, and I use Primo Sculpey for the black. I haven't experimented with other clay colors, but if you're covering the clay completely, then I wouldn't be worried about any darkening or discoloration from a higher temperature. But if the clay color is important to you, then you may want to use a clay that bakes at a higher temperature, like Kato. So I just sprinkled on some of these. Uh, you can just sprinkle it out of the bottle. You can go in with a popsicle stick or any other small tool. And then for stenciling, I'm just using my finger to apply it. And these colors blend beautifully probably put on a little too much there. One thing about the caps that come with them is they're very deep and the bottle is filled up to the top so there's going to be powder in the cap when you open it. But for some things I just used what was in the cap because there was so much. You can, so I'm blending the green back into the blue. Having a dry paper towel on hand is good because if, if it's wet, the powders are going to stick, so it's just dry to clean things off. Mm. 
You can layer and blend the colors just by using your fingers. The most important thing is that before you lift up a stencil or a silk screen, you want to remove as much of the excess powder as possible. Otherwise, it will shake down into where you don't want it on your design. I've got just a little piece of paper to catch the excess. And ready? Isn't that pretty? Here's one I did earlier and baked, and such a beautiful effect using a stencil. As I mentioned, these powders are so fine, you can use them in a silk screen as well. This is a silk screen I designed, and you can use the exact same technique, rubbing it through with your finger, making sure to remove the excess, and then when you peel it up, it's gorgeous, and then you cure it. Now, because we're making flat pieces, that's very easy. Uh, so you do kind of want to plan your project. If you make it nice and thin, it's flexible, so you might be able to wrap it around something. You do kind of want to plan what you're going to do. If you're just going to cut out shapes, then that's fine to have flat pieces. That's the easiest way of using these powders. You can definitely bake right on a ceramic tile, as we often do with polymer clay. But as I mentioned, these are epoxy resin, which is a glue, and they do tend to flow behind the clay, so they will get kind of firmly stuck to the tiles. You can see that in this key case. I think I pulled this one off and this one off earlier, but some of them are pretty stuck on there. If you're going to fully bake your clay like for 30 minutes, then you can use it on a tile and you'll be able to use a blade to lift the pieces off after baking. And it's especially helpful if you do this while they're still warm. There is a bit of a mess left behind on the tile and you can just use a blade and it will clean right up. But these powders only need a few minutes to melt and smooth out. And if you don't bake your clay thoroughly, it may be brittle and crumble. And in that case, I would suggest you bake on a non-stick craft sheet. Of course, your last baking of any polymer clay needs to be a thorough one to completely cure it so it's strong. This is good if you're doing your baking in stages, and it has the added benefit of cleaning up really easily. The colors in this set are all rather bright and maybe a tad garish, but the good news is that you can mix colors. Here are a few samples where I mix the colors. I mix the light blue and pink for a kind of a purple color. The dark blue and yellow gives us an olive green, and the light blue and yellow gives us a soft spring green. Notice in this lighter green that I didn't mix the yellow in thoroughly, so the speckles show in the finished piece. This can be a feature if that's what you want. These little triangle trays made for sorting seed beads work beautifully for mixing your colors and then using them to direct the colors where you want. So you can tap it out or use a tool. Now see these little lumps of color in here? Those will remain lumps in your pieces if you don't break them up and smooth them out you will have those little bits as texture, which you may want. It depends on the look you're going for. So you can mix them thoroughly or not so thoroughly. And then you just kind of Now the more smoothly that you put this on, the more smooth your finish will be in the end. But you can actually have some subtle texture in there. The leftovers of these three colors, by the way, are what I used on this silk screened piece. If you get yourself a set of F colors, I suggest you do what I did here. Cut yourself a bunch of tiles of clay, any color really, and then start playing and experimenting. I sprinkled on different colors, and then when I was done, I had a ceramic tile covered with kind of mud, and so I picked up these pieces, and like this one, you can dab it in your leftovers. And that's what these kind of grayish ones are, the more muddied colors. But then you can sprinkle over them with some white or some black to add areas of interest. Whoops. And if you want more fine control of your powders when you sprinkle them, put a little bit of the powder on your tile, just a little pile, and then pinch with your fingers and kind of 
you can kind of tap tap your fingers together or rub them and you'll get a little more control over where things go although the randomness is part of what I love about it once you've baked all your tiles you can go back over them with more colors like in this one you can stencil over them so I had this you can see these here on the background kind of reds and blues and then I put the stencil back over and added some whites I've had these little brass stencils for ages from scrapbooking days you can just lay the stencil over sprinkle on some powders another way to get some fine control over where they go is to use the tip of a craft knife The important thing is to ever so carefully lift the stencil straight up off the tile so you don't shake any of your powders where you don't want it and you get kind of an abstract design using this technique. Like this one was done with this sunflower stencil. Immediately after the pieces have come out of the oven while the resin is still warm and soft you can take advantage of that to add texture. You can press in with a tool like I did with these mixed colors. For this one I added lines, for this one I added dots. If you look at this one you can might be able to see it has a bit of a subtle texture and that was done before I ever baked them. I just used my tool, in this case my clay blade, and this will smooth out. It will end up with a bit of a ridged texture after it's melted in. You can also press in with a rubber stamp. If you just want the texture, which is what I did on this one, and it, it d did tend to smooth out quite a bit. You can kind of barely see the leaf texture here. If you want to see a little bit more of that, you can add an ink like stays on and then get impressions like this. This one was just inked up better than that one. But if you're not going to use a colored ink, you do want to add like a clear ink like Versamark so that it provides a release for your stamp. And you do want to make sure and do it right after it comes out of the oven. You have to work quickly. There are so many other things you can do with these. You can stamp your polymer clay first, then sprinkle on the powders, then remove the excess with tape. This is a technique we often use with mica powder on polymer clay, leaving the powders in the recesses. And then when it's cured, you get this beautiful textural effect. Before baking, you can sprinkle on inclusions like glass microbeads. And what I thought was fascinating was these did not shift in the oven. They pretty much stayed right where I put them before baking. You could add crystals or glass cabochons. You can even mix in oven safe glitter. As long as you provide something for the powders to stick to, like a layer of liquid clay painted on, you can apply the powders to rounded objects. How about trying them on beads that you didn't like the original color of? This was a lumpy bead to begin with. It had a texture and that's showing through in a very interesting way. The important thing to do is to bake them without the enamel powders touching anything or they will stick when melted. This is a little bead tray I made for myself out of some aluminum foil and I just put the beads on bead pins and put them on the rack to bake and that way they're not touching anything. The powders pretty much stay where they are and just melt in so they don't drip. Have I got you excited about trying F colors? If so, you'll definitely want to check out the mixed media materials playlist I put together for you. Happy creating! See you in the next video!